Yo, 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 what it do, y'all? It's your boy Faith Gaines, your boy Charles, and I'm here with another video, which I believe is part 11 of the series, I Will Make Him and Help Me For Him, Women Expose Your Weaknesses, part 11. All right, y'all, so check this out, y'all. Today, we got the Book of Ruth, we are on chapter 4, I don't know if you can see it, we are on chapter 4, which is the final chapter. And we about to go in, y'all. Uh, the Book of Ruth is a great book. It really is. It really is. It just, it's very, it's simple, it's short, but it has so much to learn from. You know what I'm saying? There's so much to learn from it. And, um... Yeah, y'all, so much to learn from it. So without further ado, let's jump into it, all right? So if you uh, if you don't know, go read chapter 3 and come back, and then you know where we at, all right? So let's start, right? Because remember, we left off, and... Uh, Matter of fact, y'all go read chapter 3. How about that? Y'all go read chapter 3. I ain't gonna keep telling you everything. Go read chapter 3, alright? So, let's start. Then went Boaz up to the gate and sat him down there. And behold, the kinsman of whom Boaz spake came by, uh, to whom he said, Ho, such a, such a one, turn aside, sit down here. And he turned aside and sat down. And he took ten men of the elders of the city and said sit ye down here and they sat down and he said unto the kinsman Naomi that is come again out of the country of Moab selleth a parcel of land which was our brother Elimelech's right so all Boaz is doing right now he's gathering the elders and the witnesses and he's talking to his uh he's talking to his 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 relative or his kinsman Letting them know that Naomi got this this land, this parcel of land. He's interested in buying it, but if the kinsman is going to buy it, then he's not going to buy it. He's going to let the kinsman buy it. All right? There's a reason for that. We're going to jump into that later. I I, I feel like God is showing me something, especially on where I'm at in my life. I need to know this. I need to see this. So I, I hope this edifies my brothers and my sisters out there. All right? And I thought to advertise thee, saying, Buy it before the inhabitants and before the elders of my people. If thou wilt redeem it, redeem it. But if thou wilt not redeem it, then tell me that I may know. For there is none to redeem it besides thee, and I am after thee. And he said, I will redeem it. Right? Then Boaz said, What day thou buyest the field of the hand of Naomi? Thou must buy it also of Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of the dead, to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance. Now let's stop right there, right? The reason why Boaz is telling him this is because the idea is to not just buy the land and, and receive Ruth. No, Boaz wants to keep the inheritance of his family alive through this purchase, right? He's not just going to like buy it and just forget about, you know, Forget about Ruth's uh, husband. He's going to buy in honor of the family, right? So it's not just about Boaz. It's about honoring the kinsmanship, right? Remember, Boaz is a man of integrity. He's not going to do something that ain't right. You know what I'm saying? Fellas, a lot of y'all a lot of y'all move out of impatience and y'all do things that ain't proper. And then guess what happened? Every single time it come back to bite you. Every single you can you can set your watch to it. Do something funny styles and just wait. Do something funny styles and just wait. It may take a month, it may take a week, it may take a year, it may take ten years. But guess what's gonna happen? It's gonna catch up to you. You're gonna get bit, bro. You gonna get bit. You can run. You can run. You can run far. But guess what's gonna happen? It's going to come back and bite you. So keep your integrity close. Stop playing games, guys. Stop being impatient. I always ask myself, when I'm feeling impatient about something, I literally say, what is the rush? What's the rush? What's the rush? 
right? I'm not a carpenter or anything, but there's a phrase that they say that I really like. It says, measure twice, cut once, right? So if you ain't going to do it right, if you ain't going to be sure about it and you go about it and it's wrong, you're going to end up doing it again. So <laughs> measure twice, cut once, all right? Let's get into it. And the kinsman said, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I mar mine own inheritance. Redeem thou my right to thyself, for I cannot redeem it. Right? So basically what the kinsman is saying is like, I have my own inheritance. Maybe, you know, he got his own family, so he can't redeem it. So Boaz, it's all yours, bro. It's all yours, bro. You know, sometimes we want things, but we might have a brother or sister or whatever it is that's more suited for that thing. Don't be selfish. You know that thing is not a perfect fit for you, right? You want it because it may look or sound good, but it may be better for them. It don't hurt to ask. God may be wanting you to bless that. God may be wanting to bless you, but he has to see if you're going to do it his way. You know what I'm saying? Let's get into it, man. We, we, we're not playing today. We're not playing today, y'all. Let's get into it. Now, this was the manner in former time in Israel concerning redeeming and concerning changing. For to confirm all things, a man plucked off his shoe and gave it to his neighbor. And this was a testimony in Israel. This is how they established uh, real estate, pretty much. If someone wants to give something to him, they would take off their shoe and give it to him. That's how you know was, the deal was done, right? Therefore, the kinsman said unto Boaz, buy it for thee. So he drew off his shoe. And Boaz said unto the elders and unto all the people, Ye are witnesses this day, that I have bought all that was Elimelech's, and all that was Chalon and Milan's of the hand of Naomi. So Chalon and Milan was the widows of, uh, Chalon and Milan were uh, Naomi's sons, sorry, she was Naomi's sons, and uh, Ruth and Orpah were the widows of these men. And Boaz is buying this property, like I said, to, to bring, uh, to bring, I want to say light and to bring uh, righteousness and not forget the name of these two men as he does make this purchase, right? Moreover, Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of Milan, have I purchased to, to be my wife, to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance. Like I said, he's buying it to keep the name alive. He's not just going to buy it and just, all right, forget about him. He's buying it to keep the inheritance alive because remember, these are his kinsmen, right? To raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance, that the name of the dead be not cut off from among his brethren. Like I said, he's not trying to cut off the name. And from the gate of his place, ye are witnesses this day. And all the people that were in the gate and the elders said, We are witnesses. The Lord make the woman that is come into thine house like Rachel and Leah, which too did build the house of Israel. And do thou worthily in Ephrata and be famous in Bethlehem. So now the people is just giving them blessings, right? They're saying that, they, they're telling boss, we pray that the woman you receive is like Rachel and Leah who made the tribe of Israel. Or you can say the, yeah, who made, who built the house of Israel and made it fruitful, right? And let thy house be like the house of Pharaoh, whom Tamar bare unto Judah of the seed which the Lord shall give thee of this young woman. Now correct me if I'm wrong, right? Jesus Christ is from the tribe of Judah. Correct me if I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, let me know. Just correct me if I'm wrong. But if, I, if my lineage uh, research is correct, Jesus is from the tribe of Judah, right? Now why is this important? Let's keep reading, right? So Boaz took Ruth and she was his wife. And when he went in unto her, the Lord gave her conception and she bare a son. And the woman said unto Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, which have not left thee this day without a kinsman, that his name may be famous in Israel. Ruth is talking to Naomi. She is saying, Blessed be the Lord. The Lord bought Remember, Ruth was a Moabitess. She came with Naomi back to Naomi's hometown, 
right? And the Lord was still with her and blessed her to still be able to keep her family's name alive by marrying Boaz. If that's not the grace of the Lord, I don't know what is. I don't know what it is, y'all. Y'all tell me what it is. What it is, y'all stay. The, the point being, stay within the Lord's grace, right? Stay with the Lord, right? And his grace will bless you, right? Don't go out there. You know, she could have been like Orpah and said, you know what? You ain't got no sons for me. I'm out. But because she didn't do that, she was blessed with a man like Boaz who kept the kinsmanship within the family. I believe this is just this is just how I see it, right? God always shows you two ways, if not more, how things can go. Always. Always. Because the devil will always send a counterfeit, right? Now, I'm not saying Orpah was a counterfeit per se, but she's a representation of not sticking with the Lord, right? She's a representation of that, right? Is she not? Once the sons died, she said, all right, I'm out. Maybe she was there just for the inheritance. Maybe she was there just for the goods, right? But then the Lord also showed you Ruth, the woman who was faithful, the one who was loyal, who stuck around through the deaths of Elimelech, Milan, and Shalon. She stuck around and was blessed with Boaz. Loyalty goes a long way, y'all. Uh. Loy Let me say that again. Loyalty goes a long way. If you are loyal to Christ, he is going to bless you. But it might get bumpy. It might get bumpy. But if you stick to the Lord, He's going to bless you. No doubt about that. That is a guarantee. That is a guarantee. I don't care how shaky your faith gets. Just know, okay, you know, things is a little rocky right now, but God, I know you got it. You got to have that faith when people think something wrong with you, y'all. I'm, I'm serious. People think something, yo, man, you just lost your job. That's cool. Yo, man, I don't know, somebody broke into your car. It's all good, man. God got it. Yo, man, your wife left you. It's all good. God got it. Yo, man, like, you got it. Yo, sweetheart, that dude cheated on you with your best friend. It's okay. God got it. Sweetheart, like, this happened. Like, y'all got to have that faith that people think there's something wrong with you. I'm, I think I'm playing. Y'all got to have a faith in you. I'm not a faith in you. A faith in the Lord. Lord, forgive me. You got to have a faith in the Lord that people think. I should say a faith within you about the Lord that people think you are crazy. That's what I would say. Because faith is the substance of, of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. There are things that I can just speak upon in my own life where people looked at me and was like, yo, you crazy, bro. You 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 gonna do your own thing? You gonna work for yourself? You gonna do this and that? Like how you gonna get money? And God has kept me. I'm alive, right? I'm alive, right? I'm alive, right? There we did. Need I say more? I'm alive, right? The Lord has kept me, right? And He has blessed me, and He has surrounded me with the people. That he put in my life. I didn't go out there and act crazy and do nothing crazy. I just been patient. I stayed low. And I kept in this word. And God has blessed me. And I'm so thankful. So I just say that to you guys. Stay faithful. Have that faith where people think something really wrong with you. And the reason why they're going to think something wrong with you. Because they cannot fathom. What did Christ tell the Pharisees? He said if I tell you of earthly things you don't believe me. If I tell you of heavenly things how will you believe me? A lot of people operating in their earthly, fleshly ways. Enmity with friendship with the world is enmity with God. I don't want no smoke with the Lord. I'm going to stay close to the Lord as possible. People be like, yo, you ain't got this, you ain't got that. What about this? What about that? Bro, I got God. I got God on my side. There's nothing he cannot do for me. There's nothing he cannot do for me. The simplest of things I ask for, he will bring it to me if I'm being obedient. That's nothing. Be obedient. Stop 
getting desperate. Stop living out in the world. Ladies, you lonely. Fellas, you lonely. Stop hitting up random people just because you lonely. Be patient. God has something a hundred times better than our little brains can fathom. A hundred times better than our brain could fathom, but the devil's job is to put you into temptation and get you into a place in the mind state and a space where it's going to take a lot to dig yourselves out, but don't believe you can't get out of that hole because God is with you, but you got to start being obedient. All right? Stop playing with God. He loves you. Stop playing with the, the Heavenly Father. He loves you. All right? Let's get back into these scriptures, man. All right. And he shall be unto thee a restorer. So let's go back to 14. And the woman said unto Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, which have not left thee this day without a kinsman, that his name may be famous in Israel. And he shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life. Didn't the Lord just restore uh, Ruth's life? And a nourisher of thine old age for thy daughter-in-law which loveth thee, which is better to thee, seven sons hath borne him. And Naomi took the child and laid it on her bosom and became nurse unto it. And the woman, her neighbors, gave it a name, saying, There is a son born to Naomi, and they call his name Obed. He is the father of Jesse, the father of David. Now these are the generations of Pharaohs, right? Now remember, Back to uh, uh, verse 12, right? Pharaoh's whom Tamar bare to Judah of the seed which the Lord shall give thee of this young woman. Let's go back into it, right? Now, these are the generation of Pharaoh's. Pharaoh's begot Hezron. This is why it's important to know your genealogy. Uh, First Chronicles and even in New Testament, they go over it. Pharaoh's uh, begot Hezron. And Hezron begot Ram, and Ram begot Aminadab, and Aminadab begot Nashon, and Nashon begot Salmon, and Salmon begot Boaz, Salmon begot Boaz, and Boaz begot Obed, and Obed begot Jesse, and Jesse begot David. So look at this, right? We know that Jesus Christ comes from the lineage of David, right? Ruth is now a part of that because she had Obed. See, <coughs> right? The Lord will bless you further down the line. Like, you guys think that it's always about right now. It's not always about right now. Get that out of your heads, y'all. Y'all could do something right now that's going to change the lives of, like, your great, 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 great grandchildren. But you gotta stay honorable to the Lord. God wants to bless you. Do you understand that he wants to bless you? But it is us that we act up, we get out of line, we fall out, we backslide, we commit the sins. It is us, guys, that fall behind and fall short of the glory. God wants to bless you. If there's anything that you get out of this video today, remember the Lord wants to bless you with great abundance and beautiful things. Things that you cannot even imagine. Alright? But you gotta stay obedient. Stay around people in the word. Stay around people of Christ. You know what I'm saying? We work. You know, we, we travel. We, we meet people. They may not always be of Christ. Understandable. Right? And we may take to those people, right? Some of us think we can change them. Or I could bring them to God. and uh, Ain't nobody can change nobody but the Lord himself. So cut it out. Can you pray for people? Yeah. Can you plant the seed? Absolutely. But it is ultimately the Lord that changed them, right? Like I said, God's going to make things happen. They may not happen right now, but they might happen in the future. They might happen later on in life, right? You can meet somebody, plant that seed. Things don't go right five years from now. They might come back 
a man or woman of God, and they may be like, you know what? You planted those seeds. And if you're still, you know, if you're still looking for marriage, I'm here now. You don't know that. You got to be patient, yeah? You got to be patient. I just read something. It said Noah was building an ark for, I believe, 120 years. And you see how the Lord blessed him? Some of y'all can barely wait five seconds for something. Some of y'all don't have patience for the children that you have. Some of y'all don't have patience for the job that you have. Some of y'all don't have patience for yourself. I work in the fitness world. There's people that want to lose 50 pounds in like a day. Remember what I'm telling y'all today. Anything that rushes you. Anything that tries to speed you up. That is a detour. Can God speed you up? Absolutely. If, he, if it's in his will for him to move you fast in your life. Cool. But if you know that it's you trying to speed things up. Oh, you you getting ready to set yourself up for what I like to call character development. Another season of you learning a lesson that you didn't learn in last season's episode. Last season's season, I should say. Be patient, ladies and gents. Alright? We just finished the book of Ruth. And next, we're going to talk about... You know what? Y'all just going to have to wait. I'm going to end the video here. I love y'all. Peace.